Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Homework Keys podcast. And we're really excited today. We're talking with another writer on the podcast. We love having writers on our show. And we're talking with Ali Calamari, who is the writer of Mixed Baggage, which y'all know me and Brie really loved. Uh, we thought it was great. And so thank you so much, Ali, for coming on. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is so fun. Uh, so what we like to do with new guests is we like to have you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about how you uh, got inspired to become a writer or how you got started. Um, okay, well, I, I grew up in New York and I think I knew I wanted to be a writer from a very young age, but I think like most writers, the first thought was, um, novels. And mm -hmm. I was always this like crazy, hopeless romantic in high school. And I was obsessed with like Wuthering Heights and Pride and Prejudice. And I just had all these grand fantasies of what love looked like. Um, and when I got to college, I studied playwriting. Um, being so close to Broadway in New York, it was always a passion of mine. And I was also simultaneously obsessed with movies. And I was like mm -hmm. the person constantly quoting movies. Um, and I was like non-discriminate. I love all movies. Um, and at some point it just kind of clicked for me. Like, why am I not trying to write these things that I love? Um, and so that's sort of where it shifted. Um, but I think like, many writers, I sort of always wanted a backup plan. So after I graduated college, I moved back to New York and I went into journalism and just always sort of like had a side hustle while I was writing scripts and eventually realized like, if this is what I wanna do, I need to be in LA. And so had sort of a life overhaul, moved out mm -hmm. here and then just committed to the screenwriting full time. Nice. Yeah. And so did you, uh, you, you, you said off air that you'd written scripts before, but mixed baggage was your first, uh, one that had been finished, uh, completed as a movie. Um, and so you had done a, a bunch of writing before this, uh, to kind of, before you got this one off the ground. Yes. Um, so, you know, and I'm sure you'll appreciate this as a rom-com lover. Um, mm -hmm. I've always loved romantic comedy and it's always sort of been the genre I've been most attracted to writing and probably the one that I'm best suited for. Mm -hmm. um, but it has been just the way that the industry has been, those movies just like weren't getting made for a really right. long time. And outside of Hallmark, um, there just wasn't a lot of space for romantic comedy. Um, mm -hmm which is a bummer because they're yeah. great and they make everyone happy. Um, <laughs> yeah, so hopefully that we're seeing a bit of a resurgence cross fingers uh, with, you know, what we've been seeing last year uh, with, you know, movies like Lost City and Marry Me and, and uh, Ticket to Paradise, very encouraging. So let's just Definitely. hope that that continues because they all did pretty well. So Agreed. Yeah. It's really exciting to see them you know, in theatrical release again, uh, and also all the different streaming services starting to pick up the genre again. Mm -hmm. So I think that yeah. um, for me personally, it was a lot of writing uh, and and just kind of hitting a lot of walls, like these aren't being made, these aren't being made. Um, and I think I tried to jump to different genres uh, as a way of compensating, but then like kept gravitating back towards these kinds of stories. Um, mm. So then I was really, really grateful and happy when I kind of fell in with Pixel and we were able to start developing this script among some other ones. So. Yeah. So yeah. Did you have to kind of watch a bunch of these to get the idea of like the nine act structure and just kind of the formatting that you needed for a TV movie? Um. Is it bad if I say I didn't uh, do too much research? Um, I I did watch a few to just have the sense of like, these are the expectations, but I was really lucky because um, 
there wasn't in the writing process and the production process, there wasn't that many sort of like rules imposed upon the script. Um, and it, the story sort of evolved naturally. Mm -hmm. It made sense to go here to have this many love stories. It wasn't like a, you have to have all these love stories to make it work, um, which was great. It was a really wonderful writing process. And yeah. It, yeah. So how did you come up with the idea for mixed baggage? Did I kind of wondered if maybe like what's up doc or movies like that might've been influential, you know? Um, you know, it's funny, the actual concept came from something that happened to me. Um, it didn't like result in a romance, but my <laughs> husband and I were traveling. This was like many years ago, um, to New York from LA and, he has this Filson bag um, that's like a green duffel, just like the one in the film. Um, and we checked it. And for some reason, when we were picking up our luggage, he was like in the bathroom or whatever. And I mm. picked up his bag. And then we got in the car and we were driving out to my parents' house. And I, I kept getting this phone call, um, which I ignored because it was like an unknown number. Right. And my dad and my husband were both like, answer the phone. Like it could be important. And I was like, who, who's calling me from a 718 <laughs> number? It's not important. And then of course I finally picked up the phone and it was the baggage center letting me know that I had taken someone else's bag. And so we had to like zoom back to the airport. The poor person, like they had to have their bag delivered to them later. We got our bag back. Um, but it was just this like crazy coincidence yeah. that anyone would have this exact same vintage Filson bag. Um, and so that was sort of the like first inspiration for the story was this like, because you can kind of expect, especially a check bag where you can track it, but you can expect a mix up of like your quintessential roller bag or something that's pretty common. Mm -hmm. But the fact that this was this old vintage bag and someone else had the exact same one on the same flight. Yeah, uh, was sort of a crazy coincidence. So that sort of started the bag part of the story. Mm -hmm. Very fun. Yeah. And I mean, I thought it was pretty bold to have three couples, three distinct love stories. And because uh, a lot of times, I mean, it's just hard. You have so little time in these movies to yeah. to make that all work. And a lot of times you end up feeling like, oh, I wish that we were just focusing on the one couple or, 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 uh, or maybe two, but the fact that all three worked so well for me, uh, I thought was very impressive. I mean, was that, that must've been kind of daunting to, to put together. Um, I think I, you know, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I want to say that Michael and Barbara were sort of like an add on, mm -hmm. um, in that I was writing the characters and, um, I knew that Barbara was going to be the sort of more jaded best friend and she was going to have the overall mindset of um, a practical person when it comes to romance. Um, so she was like this foil to Evie and Michael was sort of just her boss in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then as I was writing, there was just sort of like this moment where I was like, wait a minute, wh what's the story between these two? And it sort of just organically developed like the idea of them having a backstory and then um, Evie and Jake's story sort of making them, sort of inspiring them to sort of like throw off the caution and yeah. go for it. Um, so it kind of like evolved organically from the other two couples where they, their story just like, as I was thinking about it, evolved into this romance. Um, mm -hmm. but yeah, so I'm, interesting. I'm so happy to hear that you felt like they all three worked. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. I definitely did. And they were, you know, Michael and Barbara were my favorite of the three. Uh, so that's so interesting to hear that they how their, their story kind of evolved. Ho, ho, ho. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Patreon. Do you love Hallmarkies podcast, especially at Christmas? Do you enjoy the holiday previews, recaps, interviews, and bonus episodes? If the answer is yes, please consider supporting the Hallmarkies Patreon. We need your help to do what we do both during the Christmas season and all year round. 
But not only do you help a podcast led by strong, independent women by becoming a Patreon, you get to become a part of the Hallmarkies family. Starting at only $2 a month as a patron, you will have access to our Facebook Patreon group where we talk about the movies, shows, and more all year. We also have many monthly patron watch-alongs with guests like Lacey Chabert, Natalie Hall, Paul Campbell, Mary Lou Henner, and more, giving their behind-the-scenes details of their films. As a patron, you also have the chance to provide input into the podcast and even join us at different tiers. So this Christmas season, spread some cheer to the Hallmarkies Patreon and become a member today. You won't regret it. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies to learn more. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. Yeah, I think that um, it, it was like they started as, like I said, sort of service character. Barbara was always like the best friend character. Mm-hmm. And then Michael was just like this boss. And then I think I also began to sort of adore them. Yes. Very much as the writing process continued and then uh-huh. sort of giving them more to do together, which was really fun because I think they had a really nice connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought you were able to develop uh, a friendship between really all six characters. I mean, I guess Michael didn't really interact with anybody, but Evie and Barbara, but everybody else spent time together on, you know, you had scenes with Evie and Ray, you've had scenes with Evie and Olivia, you have scenes with Ray and Jake and you know all these different kind of pairings and uh and so i think there was a real uh theme of friendship also as well as romance within this within the movie yeah it, absolutely um i think that it's important because friendships are incredibly important to everyone and mm-hmm. i think that no romantic relationship can really thrive without the support of your community. Um, Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's just more real. I mean, friendships are, yeah. I mean, they're the best. They're what fuel all of us every day. Like they're who we turn to a lot of times when, if you are in a relationship, a lot of times your partner is not the right person to like talk to about certain things and you need your friends. So well, especially at the beginning, because you are, you know, unsure, like you can't really talk to the, you know, the person you want to be with. You can't really talk to them necessarily about all this, these kinds of things, because you're just figuring out. And then like later on, you maybe can a little bit more, but, right. uh, but you even have to be careful with that. Like I was, I love the line with, uh, when, when, uh, when Ray's like, is this how you're introducing me to strangers now? <laughs> Yes. That was really good. That was really good. Um, well, how did you decide what to have in the bags? Like, um, so you have the nose. How did you come up with that idea? And then so the that also the the sort of original idea I had was about the bags being really misleading and that being part of the fun and mystery of them finding each other. Uh, was that like the bags would just completely throw them off. Um, Mm -hmm. If you think about like what's in a carry-on bag, sometimes it's just really weird, random stuff. Yeah. Um, And so I I always knew the engagement ring would be there because that was sort of obviously pivotal to Ray and Olivia's storyline. And I always knew that at some point I wanted this confusion to happen between the the main couple. Mm -hmm. Um, So the nose was like, I wish I had a really sort of creative reason for why it was in there, but it just was the thing I thought of. And it, it actually, like, I thought of the nose before I even knew what Evie did or what Barbara did. Like it's sort of like the nose created their characters in Uh some way because I was literally just thinking of like, what would be weird in a carry-on bag? And for whatever reason, I thought of a prosthetic nose. And then I was like, who, well, who would be carrying that? And then of course it like brought me to the film industry and then the character sort of like bloomed out of this concept. So it was actually a very pivotal prop without really having much significance, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. (laughs) 
And do you have a, do you have a favorite of the three couples that you like the most? Um, probably, uh, Ray and Olivia. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, uh, partially they were very much inspired. There was like a lot of myself in Olivia in that my husband and I were dating for five years before we got engaged. So that, that time period, uh, was very familiar to me. Mm -hmm. And, um, I also just like, I like seeing, I think that most romantic comedies are about the beginning of a relationship. I mean, that's almost, I'd say 90% focus on two single people who eventually get together. And I really like exploring the romance between a couple that has already gone through all of that part and mm -hmm. how there's still a way to create a story that makes you like, you know, your heart feeling, oh, you know, yeah. between these people who know all these things about each other and they're not going to get thrown off by a random like conversation even Ray and Olivia when they do have a fight you know like they're not going to break up over this it's just going to be tense like the line that you said yeah. is how you're introducing me to people like we all know while we're watching it like this isn't going to torch them it's just a little bump in the road yeah. so um so I think they're my favorite but I did really enjoy writing all of them I think they all represent different sort of stages of relationships and different types of couples. Um, so, yeah, I loved that, that there, so you had kind of, uh, a little bit with Barbara and, and Michael, a little bit like friends to lovers, kind of a, a trope. Um, and then you have love at first sight, basically with Evie and Jake. And, uh, and then you have this, uh, this, uh, longer relationship with Olivia and Ray. And I, I mean, I, I just, I'm so impressed that you were able to balance all three of these relationships, make them all work. And, uh, it's, that's just very difficult <laughs> in yeah. 80 minutes and basically what well, you have like 85 minutes, 90 minutes yeah. in these. And it, it's very impressive. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. Uh, really, really good. And I, I mentioned in our re recap that I, I really appreciated that you kept Evie and Jake's story kind of innocent and sweet, uh, that I think some people would feel in a desire to kind of make that a little bit more cynical, uh, and, uh, and you know, that uh, it wouldn't all these things that, oh, that would never happen. But I feel like when you talk to most people about their love story, there's always a part of it that has a little bit of whimsy in it. That's like, oh, wow. I can't believe you, those that you met in the, you know, that you happen to both come across each other. There's just always something that's like, wow, that shouldn't have happened. And there you go. It did. So I, 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 I appreciated that you did that with their story. Well, I do think that, um, for, I would say many people, and I think Barbara was meant to represent this perspective of like, no one meets the love of their life on a plane. Like this is uh -huh. like, He's probably married, you know, like all the reasons why this doesn't make sense. Yeah. And um, I think because we are like by nature, pretty cynical, mm -hmm. but the fact is um, there are those stories. There yeah, are those stories out there and um, they're wonderful. And it's mm -hmm. like great to embrace them because in reality, maybe you like meet your partner at, mm -hmm. uh, at school or at yeah. work or, you know, but there's also the stories of the people who meet, you know, on a plane. And yeah. so it's sort of nice to be reminded that that's out there too. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I think my parents, they only met because my dad, one of my dad's mission companions was friends with my, uh, my mom's brother. And uh, so they, and she, she was, she was getting so, like sick of dating. She, and so she was talking to this guy, Charles and, uh, and she, he said, well, what kind of guy do you want? You, she said, tall, dark, and handsome, just kind of joking, you know, cause that's what people say. And uh, my dad is tall is, has dark hair and did that at least. And, uh, and handsome. And, uh, and she's like, he's like, I got just the guy for you. 
<laughs> and there you go. Yeah. So uh, it it happens. And so I appreciated that about about that story. And it just and it, and it was also really fun to see because you're right. There was like a little bit of cynicism with Barbara, but then Michael ended up being like the secret romantic, which was really fun. And it's like, I can't, I can't have her end up with Ted. <laughs> yeah. <Poor> Ted. <laughs> yeah. Poor Ted. That was um, really funny. I did. I, I loved the idea of uh, these people. Like I said, the more jaded, cynical characters uh, when they were witnessing this sort of wild, yeah. romance, like this thing literally out of a movie that it, it sort of shifts them and it changes their perspective. And especially with Michael, he's sort of like, that's like, I gotta keep things on schedule. He's sort of all business. And then he gets invested in the way like people get invested in a soap opera or something. It's like, he's like, I need to know how this is gonna end, but also we need to get our work done. (laughs) Um, So I, it was fun like thinking about these characters sort of evolving because they're seeing yeah. this wild love at first sight story play out. well and I thought all the casting was just brilliant the only person I had seen before in anything was um was Leanne but she in almost everything I've seen her in she's been like a villain we'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast A brighter future awaits if she can escape the shadows of the past. In After the Shadows by Amanda Cabot, the first book in the Secrets of Sweetwater Crossing series, a young widow returns to her hometown in Texas Hill Country, never dreaming that the new school teacher holds the key both to the mystery surrounding her father's death and to her heart. Library Journal says her sensitivity and realistic portrayal of characters often on the margins of history really shine in this new historical series. Check out After the Shadows today at bakerbookhouse.com and get 30% off and free U.S. shipping. That's 30% off and free U.S. shipping at bakerbookhouse.com or you can use our affiliate link in the description. It is, so I was, I was thrilled to see her in this and see her have a lead. Uh, and, um, and I thought she was just absolutely great. I loved all six. I thought they were all great. They were. And, you know, it's, it's funny as a writer and when you sort of hand the script off and it, it sort of becomes someone else's project in a way. And, um, uh, it's scary because you just sure. don't know who's going to end up in those roles. And of course, in my head, they looked a certain way, they acted a certain way. And I will say it was like amazing to see the actors just nail the parts so well. It was just perfect. And they mm-hmm. all embraced the characters exactly as I had in mind. And um, they just did a great job. Yeah. Yeah. Really did you get to go on set at all for this no. one? No. Well, it was in Canada. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. no. Yeah. yeah, that would have been fun. Like, yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, I, I mean, I teased on the on the podcast about the, all the Canadian showing, yes. <laughs> which was funny. All the bags. <laughs> you know, I didn't notice the uh, the the bag accent um, until you said it, but then I, <laughs> I, was, I was giggling. It's it's funny. Yeah, That's I mean, it works out that like it's in Vancouver, so Canadian. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. No, no reason. Uh, yeah, it works out good. I really, I really liked when for Evie and Jake, I really liked when she thinks that he's engaged to Olivia and just like, that was really funny. And cause she doesn't want to admit that she's upset because she barely knows this person. Like, why is she so upset? And, uh, and then Barbara's like, I, Oh, Olivia, I hate her already. <laughs> That's great. I like yeah. That. I think she's just filling the, that best friend role of, like, yeah. Well, she must be terrible. Like, <laughs> um, yeah. How did you come up with the idea that the origami rose? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure why I came up with that. Um, I was just to figure, I was like, I wonder if that's her coping mechanism when she's stressed. No, no, I do. This is uh, the only thing I can think of right now is uh, I was in a, bar once in New York and this guy came up to me and folded a a napkin rose and he made it 
float. He was a magician. And I remember it blew my mind. I love magic, but also this was like just in a random bar and, and like, there were no strings. This, this paper rose was floating. And, um, that, that moment has always stuck with me. So I'm sure there was part of that in there with the paper. Mm -hmm. rose. Um, and I think it was all just about like the idea of these two people meeting on a plane and what is in front of you. And it's like, you have the paper napkins and, yeah. um, that's sort of where it evolved from. Yeah. I liked it. It was good. And they, the kiss under the umbrella was so good. I thought it was like a perfectly written scene, uh, especially when she comes back for the extra kiss. That was so yeah. good. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. It was, uh, I don't even remember if it was raining in the script. I, I don't know if they added that in, but it was, it was lovely. I love that scene. Mm -hmm. um, and they both just like gave it so much heart and yeah. it was very sweet. It was so good. They had such great, all of the couples had great chemistry. I thought. Agreed. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and then I love the ending when he uh, asks the lady if she'll switch seats because he wants to sit next to his girlfriend and you see her like, Oh <laughs> yeah, that was cute. Yeah. I thought that I, th I was just thinking about like, you know, I'm always asking people to switch seats on planes because my kids or whatever, whatever it is. And, uh, um, yeah. I was thinking how funny it would be to try to explain to a perfect stranger, like their relationship, like, oh, we actually only met like a couple of weeks ago on a plane and, but like, we're kind of in love with each other, but we just met, you know? So I just thought yeah. that funny, like tension that was probably going through his mind of like, how do I explain this? It was so cute. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <laughs> Yeah, the and then the the whole thing, her writing her name Evie from the plane <laughs> it was really good. I love that. Uh, but uh, but let's talk about Olivia and Ray. So his struggle to on how to propose uh, that was probably the biggest like actual conflict mm -hmm. in the aside from you know your switch bags uh, that was in the in the script. And the most tension, you know, when he says like, well, why don't you just, you just propose and find a way that your, you know, your girlfriends are going to make fun of and, and everything. So how did you sort of evolve those characters? Um, well, I do think that, uh, I'm sure things are continuing to evolve, but generally speaking, there is this pressure to, um, for a man to come up with this grand proposal. Yeah. And, um, it, it is like something that a lot of people are, they'll put on Instagram or you see it on YouTube, like these sort of grand things. And there's a lot of pressure to do it right. And of course, the whole point of their storyline is it doesn't matter how you do it it's about the like couple of themselves and finding each other and and finding a way to celebrate their love like that's mm -hmm. unique to them um but i i think as someone who was a hopeless romantic i probably had an expectation from my now husband and um i he delivered for sure <laughs> but i kind of tried to put myself in his shoes about thinking about how to propose to me to make me happy. And I, I thought that was a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. And then I thought like adding in the fact that now the ring is missing, which is obviously a huge investment and um, a stressor. Uh, I just kind of was like playing around with walking in someone else's shoes. And then with Olivia, like I said, I could relate to her because I went through that experience of being in a long relationship, seeing all my friends get engaged and, and wondering like, well, when is this going to happen? But also I don't want to pressure you because everything's fine, but like, it would be really nice if we got engaged, but it's okay. Um, and so I just wanted to sort of play with that. And, you know, it, it's a, I think any relationship, and like I said, when you're exploring a relationship that's a five-year, six-year in relationship versus a new relationship, there's always this, like, you're always trying to define who you are in the relationship as far as, like, 
you know you're comfortable, you know you're happy, and you don't want to ruin things by being needy or naggy or all those things. But then you're also, you are a little impatient for this next step or whatever it is. So I kind of yeah. want to play with that with her. Um, well, and I, I think you'd also start to worry that what is the reason that they're not doing it, that they're not, especially if it's kind of out there that you want to get married, or like yeah. what, like, cause there's couples that that's just not what they're interested in. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but if, if he knows that that's what you want, why is he stopping? Like what, what is, what is the barrier? Yeah. And I think that that would be kind of nerve wracking after a while. Yeah. Mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Yeah. And so I thought that was great. And the fact that you had them both proposing, it, it was just so cute. I loved it. It was great. Thanks. Yeah. I, I love that moment too. I think, like I said, that's why they were my favorite couple. Um, yeah. I just loved the, the moment where they both get down on a knee. It just felt like um, the right sort of way for them to get engaged yeah. uh, the way the couple evolved um, in the story. So Mm-hmm. Yeah. And she likes, she's like, <laughs> it's really, it was really fun. And, uh, and, uh, yeah. And then it was fun. The whole idea of the cappuccino art. That was fun. Oh yeah. yeah. That, was that fun. all sort of evolved organically. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just like in LA, the, the coffee shop scene is very, very strong. And sure. so it felt like, it had to be a part of the story. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, well, Barbara and Michael, uh, so I do wish that we'd gotten one more scene with them because we have the, uh, the, just that scene, I think is just about perfect. The whole sandwiches scene. I absolutely loved it. And I, but I wanted, cause we don't get a final kiss with them. We just get the one in the middle. And yeah. I kind of wish we'd have one more scene, you know, that of just them, I don't know, but I love them so much. They were great. Um, well, I guess like, I'm glad I left you wanting more, but yeah. <laughs> um, I, I think the reason that it ended where it was, um, was almost because another scene felt like it would just be like, there wasn't they've just been brought to this point where it was mm -hmm. like, yeah, we're going to do this and we're going to get over this nonsense of being afraid and just like jump in. Yeah. And so the next scene would have just been like, we're here. It's fine. You know? So that's true. I think that's why that was the moment that it ended. Mm -hmm. um, but it is like, it did feel like, okay, they, they could have had that kiss again. Um, mm -hmm but they're at work and it's just like, that's true. That's at, true. Like organically, it didn't really make sense. Um, but, uh, I see why you wanted to just get a little more from them. Yeah. They're so good. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies merch store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable hardy or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies merch store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. What do you think was like stopping them from having the this relationship sooner or trying it out sooner? I think it was just sort of this friends to lovers like dynamic, like we don't want to mess up what we have kind of a thing. I think it's a couple of things, and uh, I think this is pretty common, even though you don't see it necessarily on screen that much. Um, I think one is the workplace environment of just like, we get along really well, we work together really well, like, let's not mess this up. Um, 
Number two is they're both cynical about relationships. They don't expect them to work out necessarily at the start of the film. Mm -hmm. And that sort of feeds into number one, which is this probably won't work out and then we're going to ruin our job. Uh, so let's just not go there. And then the whole sandwiches thing is, um, that's Barbara saying like, I talked myself out of this. Like I, I, I had this, I had this pressure and we almost kissed one time. Like we had this chemistry, but like, I, I just, for whatever reason, just like got convinced that it wasn't yeah. going to work out. And I do think people do that a lot where they're just, I mean, fear and just all of your baggage to yeah. reference the movie, like that is what holds you back. And, and they sort of, by seeing Evie and Jake sort of like kind of go through this ridiculous track to get together, it sort of allows them to let go. And yeah. Well, yeah. Cause she says that, that maybe I'm just the work wife, you don't want to take the work wife home. Yeah. Not that I'm considering talking about marriage. <laughs> like that was, you know, that shows what she was worried about. Yeah. Yeah. That was really good. And I just thought Michael was a great character because uh, when, and I said this in the, in the recap that I was expecting him at the beginning to be kind of this like hockey Hollywood ego guy, but then he really wasn't, he was actually kind of a nerd. Yeah. Yeah. Which was fun. Yeah. I think, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of those guys out there. Um, yeah. but, uh, I, I think the, the goal of the story and of the characters was to sort of make everyone feel like someone that, you know, like I, I can see this person in my life and I know yeah. this person in my life. And I think a lot of times in films, we get more of a cliche villain who's not that complex or deep and usually like in life, most people are just trying to get through their day and um, they have a lot more depth than we give them credit for. So uh, I think yeah. that was the goal with my goal was to make him not just like the evil boss, but someone who's like got a lot of pressure on him and is, is sort of like barks at Evie because he has pressure, not because he's mean or doesn't like her. So. Yeah. Well, I loved the whole scene when he asked her to dinner not on set, yeah. out to a restaurant. It was great. I thought that was, they did such a good job acting in that scene and the way that she was just, I loved her confidence as a character. Mm -hmm. She just knew what she wanted. And, you know, just with the, when she was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know. I loved her. I thought that was great. A great scene. Great. I'm, I'm glad that uh, you connected with her. She was yeah. really fun to write is mm -hmm. it was it was really cute and, and he's and he's kind of almost surprised he's like oh great okay yeah I'll pick you up because <laughs> a lot of times in these movies they forget to do the date scene I mean I really wish we had had time to see the actual dinner that would have been amazing but yeah. um but even just asking out on a date scene was was really fun because a lot of times they're like planning a festival or planning something together and they just spend a lot of time together and they don't have like the date uh and uh so this was it was really fun you see him like taking that risk of being like oh i'm asking her to dinner and uh i <laughs> love that scene and then it's like sort of awkward which is true like after you know a first date or first kiss or something like it can be awkward for sure. Um, I think that I definitely was exploring that uh, with Jake and Evie, but with Barbara and Michael, uh, the idea was like when they're outside of work and they're together on this day that we don't see, like everything's great. And it feels totally like we have this great connection and everything. Yeah. But then when you get back into your normal routine together, you're, it's just like, it becomes awkward. It's like, who are we now? How do we interact? Like everything becomes a little bit more loaded. And that's why they hit that bump in the road because they both just like get in their own heads and yeah. sort of freak out about it and then mm -hmm. sort of torch it for a little bit. Um, yeah. The, the kiss scene I thought was really interesting because there was a side of me that like, what is his issue? Why didn't he just go for it? Like why? Because I thought it was a really good scene. Uh, and I was proud of her for going for it. 
yeah. uh, and putting yourself out there. But yeah, there was a side of me that's like, oh man, he would be more into it, I think. But yeah. I guess I can understand too, like you said, with it being like at work. Yes. I think that was very much the holdup, not the emotional side, but more mm-hmm. just the unprofessional nature of it. Um, and I think it, again, like he's in his head panicking about these things. And so it was just sort of like, two people talking themselves out of something they both want. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was really, and then I, I just absolutely thought it was a perfect scene of romantic comedy writing in this, the sandwich is seen, like you said. Uh, and when he says, I feel like a teenager and not in a good way. <laughs> it's great. Yeah. Well, I think also Barbara and Michael are older and they're supposed to be like more experienced too. So yeah. they, they sort of, again, represent this different stage of love, not just like in the friends to lovers, as you said, but also they're more experienced. They've sort of like been through it. And so they, it's sort of like daunting when, Mm -hmm. when you get overwhelmed by feelings, because you're just like a mature adult with a job and you're just like, what's happening to me. And so I think that's sort of what he meant. Like, I'm, I'm sweaty. I'm nervous. Like, why is this happening? This is weird. Um, yeah. But I loved when she was like, what is, what was my, uh, what was my, uh, like flaw. And, uh, and she says, was I too old? Was I too brash? Did I wear too much makeup? And then he says, no, you're perfect. Just the way you are. So good. Well, we always- I love that. My hope for everyone is they find someone who feels that way about them. Yes. Yeah. And and just how vulnerable she was. I thought that she the actress did such a good job in that like just getting that vulnerability and that strength at the same time. I, I thought both of them were very good actors. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they did a great job, I thought. Yeah. So well, very good. I thoroughly enjoyed the the movie i don't uh give my sort of hyperbole uh lightly uh when i say i love something i really do and i just was so impressed with all three relationships with the way the banter was written the way that all the characters were like developed and i just i think it's very difficult to do in such a short period of time what you did and so congratulations it was Thank great. You so much. It really means so much. And honestly, like when you write this kind of movie, the goal is just to make people smile. I mean, yeah. that's why we all watch rom-com. We just want to walk away feeling happy and good. And so it makes me so happy to hear that you yeah. enjoyed it so much. Oh, it's, I really did. Well, before we go, we like to give our little get to know you questions. Uh, so our first one is what is the best ice cream flavor? Oh, best ice cream flavor. Okay. Uh, chocolate peanut butter. Mm, that's a good one. What's your favorite color? Purple. Me too. Uh, what music are you into right now? Oh, music. Um, I really love Jason Isbell. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay. All right. What's your go-to date night food? Uh, oh, date night food, uh, probably Italian food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. What is your go-to date night activity? If you're going to do something out. Um, well, I mean, again, so I'm, I'm married. So it's like, if we get away, it's a date, no matter if it's in a car <laughs> or whatever we're doing is a date. Um, we actually really like to go on hikes. It's like not a night activity, but mm-hmm. Um, that is one of my favorite things to do and then go out to dinner and have a great dinner without the interruption of life is right yeah Yeah. very good okay which do you like better dogs or cats dogs okay uh beaches or mountains oh gosh I like them both do I have to choose uh uh I guess mountains but I love the ocean yeah I just don't like sand okay Okay. I want to be well, here. then you probably pick mountains then. Yeah, I can. Unless, I, unless you have like a rocky beach. I mean, it's just like LA. There's some mountains and some ocean. 
<laughs> or yeah, in Vancouver, if you ever go up there, they've yeah. got both too. Yeah. So, all right. What's your favorite holiday to celebrate? Favorite holiday, um, probably Christmas. My yeah. oldest daughter was born on Christmas. So oh, very special day at our house. That's so cute. Uh, yeah, it's hard to beat Christmas because it's like a whole season, especially in in the world of Hallmark. <laughs> yeah, as and opposed it's to just, just a like day. The outside of the actual day, yeah, there's just like this lead up to it that's so fun watching mm-hmm. movies and and just. The, the whole culture of the season is really fun. Yeah. All right. Uh, last question. What is your favorite Hallmark or romantic movie? Um, well, I'm afraid this is not a Hallmark movie and it's an oldie, but my favorite romantic movie, like of all time is The Princess Bride. Oh, from childhood yeah. till now, one of the best movies of all time. Mm-hmm. And then straight up rom-com, uh, would be sleepless in Seattle. Um, mm-hmm. So Nora Ephron is like my goddess. She was, she and, was the best. Yeah. And so I, I don't think there are, I can't think of a film that is more perfect than that one for mm-hmm. me. Was, well, yeah. And you can kind of see sleepless in Seattle vibes a little bit mixed bag. It's just a little bit with them being separated and, and yet still, you know, there, there was a bit of an, an ode to it and it's yeah well, yeah but yeah, yeah that's it, that's I think that movie is so perfect because the couple's not even together the whole movie yeah. and yet it's like one of the most romantic movies of all time and that I think is such an impressive feat that she accomplished so well in the way that movie talks about grief and loss I think is so beautiful when he yeah. talks about just getting up and breathing and then yes. <laughs> breathing in and breathing out yeah I mean Tom Hanks oh yeah so it's but people sometimes you know look at they take a movie like that and kind of don't give it the heft that it deserves you know they're oh it's just a it's just a rom-com like it's barely a comedy it's agreed (laughs) yeah I mean it's I I think it's funny but it is funny so um it's the type of rom-com that I'd love to see more of. And that's yeah. sort of what I try to write, which is like, it's character-based and it's dialogue driven. And it's about, I mean, that one in particular is about these two people talking to other people a lot um, mm-hmm. about love and loss and all these like marriage, all these like really hefty topics. And yeah, I think yeah. that we've gotten impatient as audiences. Like we need this plot or visual stimulation so much but really like some of the best stories are Mm -hmm. seeing these characters sort of evolve um yeah well in she was so good at Nora Ephron was so good at writing that the the uh and you know and you've got mail the the idea of two people falling in love with just their words yeah and their voices and same thing in Seattle you know just listening to him talk yeah they fall in love with each other yeah. which is, is great. So yeah, I agree. Those are good, uh, very good choices, <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. This was a blast. I, I really loved the movie. So it was great to talk to you. Thank you so much for having me and thank you for loving the movie and, and saying such kind things that it, it, like means the world to me. So oh, well, we'll be excited to hear what, uh, what you do next. So definitely keep in touch. We'll do. And- and uh, yeah, so if you're listening, let us know what you think of all the things we talked about. We'd love to hear. And uh, yeah, thanks again. And we'll, uh, yeah, we will definitely be in touch. <laughs> We'd like to thank Ali for coming on the podcast. This was so much fun to get to talk with her. So let us know what you think about all the things we talked about in the comments section or on Twitter. And you can follow us at Hallmark's Pod and Hallmark's Podcast, all of our social media. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. We really appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We'll have our playlist of all of our writer interviews. So you definitely want to check that out. And uh, you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media, iTunes, YouTube, and on Rotten Tomatoes. Check that out. We also have our patron group, which is the best way that you can support us. And we really appreciate it. And we have a merch store, uh, which has a lot of fun, cool designs. So take a look at that. And thanks so much, everybody. We'll talk to you later. Bye.